scenario building is really about um, trying to map out a possible path or future or direction. An organization or an individual or a people or a continent might take on any particular issue. In truth, every single person builds scenarios. One always asks, what if? If I do this, this might happen. Whilst if I make this decision, the route is more likely to be that. We're actually building scenarios of the future and then coming back to make sure that the decisions we make today give us the future we want. In our case, the issues were really innovation and intellectual property. Intellectual property has become such a phenomenal concept that is interdisciplinary, that touches every aspect of people's life. In fact, in some cases, intellectual property is a matter of life and death. So we were asking ourselves, what is the future of innovation and intellectual property going to be like in 2035 in Africa? The Open African Innovation Research and Training Project, known as Open A, has spent three years researching scenarios. The scenarios developed look ahead to the future of knowledge governance, innovation, and intellectual property in Africa. A draft report on the scenarios was launched during a conference at the University of Cape Town, attended by participants from 53 countries. The final scenarios report is now freely available on the Open Air website. The publication is the product of extensive research, including in-depth interviews with experts in Africa and around the world, and 10 different scenario building workshops attended by Open Air Network members. A key task for the Open Air scenario builders was to decide which forces are most likely to be the drivers of change, pushing the evolution of knowledge, innovation, and intellectual property in Africa between now and the year 2035. It was only after nearly a full year of research and workshops that the beginnings of distinct scenarios began to emerge. We had about five possible scenarios out of almost 20 or 30. So we continued to think, talk, um, consult different individuals. Uh, up to a point where we decided on three possible scenarios. We devised three scenarios, which will be presented to you now. These are three overlapping scenarios. And all of these perspectives, none of these perspectives are right, none are wrong, none are certain to occur, none are impossible. And so your perspective matters. The map that we've provided for you in the open air scenarios will hopefully influence you and your mindset um, in your future work. My name is Nagla Riz and I'm working on the wireless engagement scenario. It is a world where appropriate technologies have taken place. Africans have made very good use of uh, mobile technologies and we called it wireless engagement. There are tons of opportunities for young people. It is, at the end of the day, male-dominated. There are some opportunities for women, but the culture still prevails. It is not a rosy world because there's always this thing in the tail. There are those who are left behind. There are those who will not have access to the phone, to, the, to charge their phones. In case of Egypt, for example, there are high rates of basic read and write literacy, and these will stay in the way of um, uh, the inclusion that is uh, offered in this scenario. The creation of knowledge and innovation will very much uh, gravitate around uh, formal structures, hierarchical structures, uh, the mix between proprietary and even open, um, open uh, licenses and open IP will still work with standards that cater to the global environment. In general, the recommendation of the research would be to keep an eye on the threats. Those who are not able to learn the rules of the game will really fall behind and there's likely to be a widening gap, uh, not just in digitally, but also in uh, income and development in general. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this world. Informal, the new norm. So the World Bank thinks this is the new norm, and it is. It has been for a long time. 
only that we decided to ignore it. We hoped it would go away. Only that it's not. The folks in the informal sector don't think about the formal IP systems, IP being intellectual property. So those aspects of intellectual property which are important to them, like personal reputation, uh, how you do a job, uh, being the, your brand, those are important in terms of fostering the informal sector. The big risk with the informal, the new normal, is some uncertainty. Uh, for instance, China comes in, builds the institutions, and uh, they wipe out the small guys on the streets. That, I think, constitutes a risk assumption for this particular scenario. We think that in this scenario, the formal sector or the public sector needs to pay more attention to how innovation happens, whether it's business or technology in the informal sector, and make sure that it actually is supporting those informal innovation systems. Welcome to Sicily, Africa. We are reviving our traditional knowledge and practices. The elders and the youths are having a concert of progress. And we are taking our destiny in our own hands. We begin to see as we get further into the future, the critical realities of environmental crisis, resource scarcity, and name it, a combination of several factors. So traditional knowledge, sustainable development becomes the very strength that we would have. Systems that are based on customary laws and practices are likely to be, to be revived in, in terms of having the society be the gatekeepers of their knowledge systems. The risk we could identify in this scenario is that there is a tendency for people to withdraw back to traditional values and narrowly define what constitutes traditional values in the year 2035. And that becomes a significant opportunity for discrimination against people. So these scenarios will be useful to policymakers, to private sector business leaders, to civil society organizations, to academic researchers. All of these stakeholders can benefit by thinking more open-mindedly about multiple, plausible, but distinct futures. The purpose of scenarios is threefold. One, information gathering. Two, bridge building. And thirdly, strategizing, making strategy. And we hope that this is simply stage one, part one of a longer process. I must say that indeed this has been a very, very fascinating event for me. So I am sure I've gathered a lot of information indeed. I think the three um, scenarios that uh, we've, we've been through have been very informative. I am now part of a network, I can say that. We are talking about the future. The future is unsure. Whatever happens in the future, we want to be engaged. But we can only do so if we are involved in things that are relevant to our continent, to the countries, to the people at the grassroots level. We are taking a commitment to seriously continue debating these issues and how to face the future uh, of innovation in our continent. Thank you.